Thank you. We thought, didn't we, if it's all right with you, that we save cards and prezzies till tea time, when Joseph's got more time after school. I shall look forward to tea time all day. And then afterwards, I thought that you and I could do a birthday dinner? Well, I'd rather do lunch, if that's all right. Dinner would suit me better. Sorry, lunch would suit me better, unless it's a huge problem for you. No, of course not, and it is your birthday. Exactly. So everyone has to indulge my every whim all day long, don't they? Yes, Daddy. There you are. Well, it'll be a novel sensation for us all. Lunch, then. Shay Marlon? Shay Marlon. Shall I book? No, it's all right. I'll do it. I've got one or two other calls I want to make. I see. Come on, then, Joseph. Let's finish getting you ready for school. Leave Daddy to his various indulgences. Um, I've got to, right? <laughs> you want to meet where? Hey, whatever you say. I'll see you there then, eh? Oh, and by the way, happy birthday. Who was that then, Charity? Can you keep the blasty noise down? Phone's going all the time. You shouting in me ear all. I'm trying to get some kip here. Shut your face. This here's where we eat. It ain't your doss house. Ken, it's your father. He's a disgusting old man. And it ain't your doss house neither. You're here on sufferance. And glad though I was to be rid of you. It'll only take one word from me to Isaac, and you're out of it. <laughs> you're the one who's not wanted here. You miserable, pathetic excuse for a father. In fact, it's time you went. Ah, me back. Oh, sleeping on here, study. Oh. It's knackered. Ken, it's time to go to Shugdins. We're going to take that trout to Marlon's on the way. If you are not out of here by the time I get back, I'll put you out that door myself. Get off the ship! And then, right, it's either go back home or it's a pigsty. Cos you ain't getting back in. Zach? Charity? Cos me nearly see quit this shirt, dude. Do you mind if I turn this off? No. Before Victoria comes down, um, that was your Aunt Maggie. She's got official permission to go ahead with your mum's funeral. That means they've finished... With a post-mortem, yeah. She's asked me to organise everything for her. Um, she doesn't want to come herself. She's very upset, so I said that I would. She's going to let me know if the prison authorities decide to give their permission for your dad to be there. Give the permission? But he's got to be there. It's our dad. It's our mum's funeral. Yeah, of course he should be there. But it's up to them. Does dad know, you know, about the funeral? I'm going to visit him tomorrow and explain the situation. I want to come. You can't come tomorrow, Andy. I'll talk to him about it, though, about you visiting. I know how much you both want to. I'm really sorry. About everything. Bro, I told you I don't want them! Look, they are the biggest, finest, fattest... Freshest. Yeah, trout that you'll ever find anywhere. You eat them, then? I'm one man, you're a restaurant. They poached them on farm, aren't they? Yeah. Poached? Illegal, stolen, nicked? Misappropriated. That's never bothered you before. Well, I just want to keep things a shame on above board. Sometimes, you know, lad, you're a real disappointment to me. Sometimes you don't act like a real dingle at all. And who out of your customers is going to be able to tell the difference any road? Unless you tell them. Oh, leave it out, will you, kid? What are you going to do? Fight me over a load of fish? You talk about me not behaving like a proper dingle. What sort of dingle is he? Nutter's branch? Whoa! No! <laughs> that, 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 that's more like it. Yeah, Dingle's sense of humour. And well, there's no nutters in this family. Not unless you are going to look this gift dodge in the mouth. Gills. You are. Mouth. Gills. <laughs> oh, never mind. Is it a deal, then? It's a deal. Hey! <laughs> 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 Uh, 
All right, I'll be off then. I'll be on time tonight. Well, I'll, I'll try and be on time. Yeah, try. I can't promise, but I'll do my best. Okay. I won't be too late in any case. I love you, Angie. And you've got Peter Mattingly at 4.30. Well, don't book anyone else in. Peter will take a good half hour and I've got Sean coming at 5. Ah, so, uh, do you want me to go home early again then? Oh, oh, no, um, not tonight. Can you hang on till five this evening? Um, just in case anyone calls in whilst I'm with Peter. All right. <laughs> Reporting for duty. Blondie. Time for a brew, Cathy. Uh, two sugars, not much milk. Actually, boys, I haven't really. I've been asked to organise Sarah's funeral and I'd quite like to do some shopping while you're here. And there's quite a bit to do on the farm. And I think Andy would appreciate getting out there. No brew, then. <laughs> right, then, uh, we get out there and do a bit of work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all right. Kathy says there's a lot of work to do out there. Yeah. Yeah, right, come on, you great lummock. We're here to help. Some people just don't understand the meaning of the word work, do they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> There's also the special of the day, Trout Provencal. Mm, sounds like a birthday lunch to me. It's Chris's birthday. No, oh, many have returned. Mm. How's it cooked? It's poached. No, it's, it's grilled. Uh, uh, marinated in olive oil, white wine, tomato juice, uh, garlic, olives, a hint of basil. And then it's, it's not poached, it's grilled. Sounds delicious. Yep. Mm. Thanks very much. It's obviously poached. Poached, the dingle connection. There's a lot of things here. Gonna empty the shop, is she? I'm trying to stock up and buy stuff I think we might need for after the funeral. Oh, one of those grisly teas, is it? Well, I suppose it's gonna be even more grislier than usual this time. Awake's a very important event for the bereaved. Yeah, those poor boys. They've always been my focus in all of this. Have they? Emily, do you mind getting all this together for me? I'll nip back later and pick it up. Only I've got Zack and Kane holding the fort. Holding the fort? Doing the fort over, more likely. Now, if I was you, while Kane Dingle's around, I'd have an infantry made of the fort's contents. Well, at least Zack's trying to help, not just standing around making snide comments. If you like, I could drop the stuff off for you later on. Oh, could you, Emily? And I've got so much to do. Of course. Oh, thanks. I'll see you later. Those poor boys. A sex-mad mother burnt to death in a barn. A father in prison accused of her murder and now the local parentis at breakdown point and shacking up with the local mafia. Sometimes, listening to you is just like reading the paper, Mrs Windsor. Oh, do you think so, Emily? Well, thank you. Anything the matter, Betty? I wish to make a formal complaint. Oh, yeah? The prices in this shop are prohibitive. I just wanted to get a few little luxuries for me and Seth for Christmas. I've looked all around and everything is beyond the means of a mere senior citizen. <sighs> Look, Betty, you know the argument as well as I do. A corner shop isn't just a corner shop, it's a... Community resource. Community resource, thank you, Emily. And as such, you may well need to pay a penny or two more... A oh, penny or two? ..for the personal service that I provide than you do for touch tilling at your local supermarket. <laughs> Is that what you provide, Viv? Personal services? <laughs> I was wondering. Oh, stay out of it, Eric. But we are sorry you can't afford the things you want, Betty. And you, Emily, I can handle this. I suggest, Betty, that you get on a bus to Hotton and you'll soon find that the fares alone will simply outweigh any savings made by a penny pinching. Penny pinching? I have never penny pinched in my entire life. My only sin is that I'm an old age pensioner, but I will do as you suggest. I will get on a bus and go to Hotton, where no doubt I will encounter 
Not only better bargains, but better manners. Good day to you. Another satisfied customer? Ah, oh, Betty, um, don't get hot and just yet. Um, I've got an idea. Ah, well, if it's an about an assassination, I'm your woman. Um, <laughs> what sort of uh, Christmassy things were you... Uh... Well, you know, the usual peaches in brandy, orange and lemon slices. Um, them chocolate liqueurs shaped like bottles. Nice box of dates with one of them little harpoons in them so that Seth and I'll me tell you can sit. Come and see me tomorrow. I might just be able to help. Eric, are you going to pay for those toilet rolls? Ah, uh, <laughs> no, that's it. It's all right. Um, <laughs> I'll manage. Boss said I should bring you this. Trout Provencal. Ah, oh, cheers. Hey, I better know where this comes from. You being a dingle. It's not porch, it's grilled. Grilled. What are you on about? Hey, Tell me, what are you doing here? I'm having my dinner. Oh, a bit of a strange spot, I know, but... Oh, Chris is inside, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, but he's with a client. Uh, a bloke. They're talking knowledge. A uh, big contract. Uh, he'd hate to be disturbed, and uh, and it's uh, it's dead boring, any road. Oh, sorry, he's with Zoe. Oh, thanks, Marlon. I thought he would be. Having a nice birthday lunch, is he? Hey, look, you can't go in there. Zoe knows it. Oh, oh no, whoa, 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 Charity, don't go in. It'll cause trouble. Trouble? Me? It'll never cause trouble. <gasps> Ooh, Marlon, is that that chap in? Because that poached. Eh, I'll order some of that. I've just checked. We've run out of trout. I'll have a coffee then. We're in a restaurant. We can't just serve coffee at lunchtime. Well, you better call in the bouncers then, haven't you? Regular espresso or cappuccino? Regular, please. Look at her. She's doing it on purpose. She's just having a cup of coffee. Don't tell me Charity Dingle normally pops to the local restaurant every time she fancies a cup of coffee. Well, actually, she does have some very idiosyncratic little habits. I don't wish to know about her idiosyncratic little habits, but thank you. Mm, some of them are very endearing. Now, I thought you didn't want to talk about her. It's a bit difficult when she's sitting opposite me. Just having a bit of fun with you, that's all. Fun? Is that what you call it? No, actually, you're right, Zoe. It isn't fun. So, next time you see your... floozy, will you tell her that I don't enjoy being baited in this way? To be fair to Charity, she's been discreet enough until you got on her case. In fact, we both were. Seriously, think about it, Zoe. There are some of us who might really end up as dead meat if certain individuals find out about this relationship. Psychopathic thug, name of Kane Dingle. Aggressive, law-breaking layabout, name of Zack. Well, there. We've practically discussed the entire family. You should have thought about all this before. All the same, you need to keep up appearances. I've got an appointment with Lady Tara. She wanted another chat about security up at the hall. Oh, uh, she's with a client, Peter Mattingly, 4.30. Well, she made the appointment quarter to five. Well, she must have forgotten about Mr Mattingly. She's double booked. I'm so sorry you've been called out for nothing. Shall I make you another appointment for tomorrow? I'm busy tomorrow. Look, I've set aside the rest of the afternoon for this. I may as well wait. Oh, I shouldn't wait. She might be ages. I don't mind. Not now I'm here. Right. There you are. Oh, thanks, Emily. You've no idea how much it helped not having to go back and pick them up this afternoon. Oh, I enjoyed the walk. I don't get much fresh air these days. <sighs> I like to have fresh air too. I've just made some tea and some toast. You want some? Oh, I'd love some. Well, sit yourself down. How are you coping on the farm? Yeah, we're fine. Hard work. How do you know? Robert? It's all right. I used to run one. After my mum died. My dad had a farm. If he were tired or ill, I had to manage it by myself. I were on my own quite a lot. It's 
probably why people think I'm a little bit odd now. No, they don't, Emily. Oh, yes, they do. I don't mind. I like being me. I like being me too. Well, I wish we had you helping us out instead of Kane. He's not really doing anything, just follows Zach around. Just as well, really. You know, so little about farming, he'd probably try and milk the sheep. <laughs> He's a city boy. Well, I'm willing. Do you mean it? Come and help? I'd love to. I'm sure Mrs. Windsor would like me. It's mostly maintenance work this time of year, isn't it? Buildings and fences, supplementary fee for the sheep. Yeah, 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 it is. Now, how about Daddy playing one of his birthday CDs and I shall make us a fresh pot of coffee, shall I? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't really have time. Oh. Well, I've got to get ready. You can play one of them tomorrow when you're home from school. I gather you're going out. In about an hour. I presume I'll be putting Joseph to bed then, shall I? There's no need to presume that. Nanny can get him ready, but I'll still have plenty of time to read him a bedtime story. Good. We're in the middle of a really good book, aren't we? We're just up to the part where Grumpy Mary gets left all alone in the manor house. Yes, well, if I'm thinking of the right book, she has some fairly foul relations too, I seem to remember. Hmm. All comes right, though, in the end. You can tuck him in for me, if you like. But then you like to do that anyway, don't you? Look, I really don't think there's any point in your waiting any longer. It's nearly the end of the afternoon. Why don't you go home? I'll explain to Tara. Thanks, Peter. We'll be in touch soon. Oh, goodness, Angie, what are you doing here? I think we're all wondering that. You told me to come. Quarter two. I didn't, did I? Oh, I must have got mixed up with tomorrow. Oh, how silly of me. I do apologise. Angie's been waiting a long time. But it's a bit late now, wouldn't you say, to start a meeting? I'll go. Oh, no, 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 there's no need. Not now you've waited all this time. But... Angie. You must be five o'clock, I gather. I was quarter two, but Lady Tara double booked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, five o'clock, that's right. We were um, going to review the transport provision for the stud for the next three months. It seemed, when I looked at it, rather inadequate. <laughs> I'll leave you to it. I've wasted enough time. Oh, I'm so sorry, Angie. You could wait, but... I suppose it does look as though I'm going to be rather busy with your husband now. Look, I'll phone you, make it up to you. Don't worry. She's such an airhead. You're looking good tonight, then. Thanks. Needs to get him rid of the old man. Yeah, well, given the choice between him and the sofa, I'd rather have the sofa. It's hard work working on that farm. Makes a man thirsty. Mm, do you know, I found washing my hair and doing a full makeup has just the same effect. Better make a night of it then, eh? Oh, I can't, Kane. I've got a date later. Who with? Just a punter. What, the same one you were on the phone to this morning? Maybe. I've done up like a dog's dinner, haven't you? Who is it? You don't know him. Who is it? Do you want another drink? What were you doing, Tara? You knew I was coming. I mean, you phoned her up and invited her round here when you knew I was about to walk through that door any minute. Do you want her to find out? No. So what's it all about then, eh? I mean, some kind of sadistic pleasure at her being here when she doesn't know. Or just some power trip over me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, making me sweat. Watching me sweat and enjoying it. I just like living dangerously. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't like living dangerously. Not that dangerously. I've had enough of this. I'm going to put a stop to it and, look, I'm going to walk out that door and I'm not coming back, Tara. I can do without this. I don't need it. I've done Joseph's story. Just thought I'd put my head round, say good night. You're not coming back tonight, then? No. Good night. You're right, Chris. This is a dangerous game you're playing. Just think about how much reason that family has to hate you. They think you've killed Butch, 
And now you're sleeping with Charity. If any of them find out... But why should they find out? It's been going on for months. No one knows except for you. If you force us into the open, then yes, there is a danger. I'm going out now rather than having her back here because of you. So it's up to you, really. I'm taking her to a hotel miles away. I'll be very careful. Well, I better get back. Lisa will be wondering. She's probably made tea for me too. I might have to have another one when I get home. Two teas? I shall be right roly poly. Oh, thanks for your company, Emily. It's been great. Yeah, um, thanks for saying that you'll have that on farm and that. No, thank you for letting me. I can't wait. I thought I don't want my wellies for good. Don't forget your scarf. Mind how you go now. Do you want a torch? It's dark in the lane. I'll be fine. Right then. I shall bid you good night. 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 Hope I've not kept you waiting. I just arrived. Happy birthday. Thank you. Funny place to meet, isn't it? Well, I thought with Zoe knowing. Best to go to a hotel. Mm, suits me. But we don't have to go just yet. I mean, uh, I've got your birthday present and I wanted to give it to you now. Oh, she won't say anything. 